Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Stephanie doing dumb things in a hotel room. Now, in case you have no idea what this is, neither do I, I just made up that name, but I did start this channel by doing everything in my hotel room, except that was in Colorado and I am currently, presently, in Raleigh, Durham. Also, I have no makeup on because I literally have no time because I have no light other than the natural sun and it is currently like 4, 420, so I, I don't have time. So what I've decided to do is I purchased this lovely set of gray sheets. Making things out of sheets is not new on this channel, but there you go. That's what we found. They are like 50-50 poly cotton, so it'll be fine. Not too much stretch, just enough to be, you know, wearable. And they're king size, which I didn't realize when I bought them, but we love that because that means I can make a sushi or skirt. So goal is to make a pinafore thing? Why am I making this? Am I going to wear this when I'm in Florida? Well, I probably. I'll find somewhere to wear it. The reason I'm doing this is because I am currently in a cold state and I need layers. And coming from Florida, I don't... Layers aren't a thing. <laughs> so I have found this thrifted blue dress right here. And I am just going to basically dupe this skirt as it falls on the ground. I'm gonna dupe this skirt because I like how flared it is. I might flare it out just a little bit more. I'm going to do four panels, two front, two back, because with a king size sheet set, why not? Also, definitely no ruffle on the bottom. I'm probably just gonna do normal flared all the way down. I, I don't, I'm not a, I don't feel like I will need a ruffle for the shenanigans, but I might, I don't know. And the other nice part about this dress that I have found is it is already my waist measurement, so don't have to measure anything she says now not knowing if that's the case or not but i'm not gonna dupe the entire dress because i i don't have that kind of time and i'm in a hotel room with no pattern paper no nothing that i'm used to having i have a borrowed sewing machine a bag of goodies that my friend gave me to help me along also known as like thread and stuff yes there are michaels and things but i'm trying to do this thrift challenge so i'm only trying to find thrifted things thrift or gift, I guess, technically, because I definitely didn't buy the thread, but hey, we're just gonna, it's gonna be fine. Anyway, I did find some buttons today in my stash so that I will be able to button the backs, and I think I'm gonna use the elastic out of the king size fitted to make an elastic back, but I'm probably talking too much, so I might as well just uh, go ahead and finish the laundry, because you don't make things out of thrifted things without washing them first, because ew. Ew, no! And let's go ahead and get this thing started. Now, obviously, of course, what did I forget to talk about? That's right, the waistband. That thing that keeps your waist in a band, supposedly, is what I'm told. Just kidding. Uh, it is going to have a waistband. I also decided to go with a little panel front. Uh, don't ask me yet how I'm going to decide this size. I hadn't decided yet at this time. We are going to do some straps as well and hopefully cross them over in the back. Um, don't know how I think I'm going to do buttonholes in a hotel room, but hey, let's go. Ah uh, yes, the handy dandy ever trusty piece of 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper that you perpetually have in your room as the stage manager. That is what I chose to help size what I wanted my front to look like. So, you know, I did some very specific measurements here, <clears throat> and then decided, yeah, that'll do just fine. And then we took the same sheet of 8.5 by 11 paper and, well, eyeballed that motherfucker. And as you can see here, very, very specific ways of doing this <clears throat> didn't end up crooked at all. Not at all, but hey, when only you have paper, a pen, and uh, the will to make, uh, that's what you get, friends, that slightly lopsided bodice fronts. It's all good. And with it cut out and wrinkles aplenty, it was time to move on to the skirt. That's right, we did some very specific here where I attempted to use a tape measure and then said, oh right, I don't know what size skirt I want, so here we go, some very scientific <clears throat> uh, ways of measuring my skirt length. And then I just guessed how much longer I wanted it. And with my Frixion pen doing the heavy lifting here again, I went ahead and made a vague attempt at a semicircular skirt. Fun fact, this hem was uneven, so the whole thing's a little uneven, but hey, we're not here to judge. Well, okay, maybe just a little. There are no markings on this machine. Oh boy, okay. I think that looks right. No, that looks like a half inch. Okay, great. Wish me luck. <laughs> oh God, that's really tight. That's what she said. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I just went straight in with the project. Yeah, sure, that, why not? That's a great plan, Stephanie. 
One down, lots to go. A few moments later. You go from one being perfectly fine to this thing. Yeah. I don't think I'm doing much more tonight then. Several days later. And once I had been able to finally figure out what the heck was wrong with that sewing machine, I did actually <clears throat> make some straps, but as you can see here, I did one very incorrect and one correct, and well, I did try to rip them out and uh, it, did, did, it did not go well. Not. At all. One week later. Well, as you can tell, friends, I did not get this project done in one day. So it is now my next day off, and the reason it took me this long is because the machine imploded. The tension was wrong. I couldn't figure out what it was because I, I, don't, I don't know. So then I asked my friend and she gave me a couple fixes and none of those worked. And then I finally decided to open up the bobbin case and in the bobbin case, there lay the problem, friends. The thread had like wound, had like jumped ship and wound itself around the thing. It was a mess. Either way, when I finally fixed it, I sort of felt like this. It's alive! Anyway, long story short of, I now have two straps, and that's literally all I've sewn except for that one other, like, half a pocket before the th bobbin jump ship. So, I'm gonna do go do some more of this. The one thing I don't know before I get started is, I, I think I'm gonna do... It's really hard to see on this blouse, but I'm thinking I'm gonna leave this end. Originally, I was gonna have this be the back and have there be, like, extra buttonholes when I get home, because if you think I'm buttonholing on this mother you are incorrect. No, no. Uh-uh. I'd rather do many, many other things than do that. So there will be lots of snaps and other efficient closers. I am not going near a buttonhole in this machine. So I think I want to do that. So I'm going to have a button here. Straps are going to go around here. And then I, I don't, I don't know. I guess I just have to sew down or maybe I just put snaps on the back too. I don't know what I'm doing. This is going to be fun. We'll figure it out, right? But either way, I think this is going to be the front because I want a little fake button. Any, okay. I'm rambling because I don't want to go do things and make decisions. So let's go make some decisions. <laughs> now, because these did come from a sheet, they are wrinkly as hell. So I do have to iron them first. And yes, I'm using these super classy <laughs> hotel iron to do it. And yes, I already tested it. No, it doesn't leave a residue. Don't worry. And after my best attempt at pressing, I mean ironing, I mean whatever the heck you want to call doing that with that machine, uh, here you go. We have a top section. So as much as I think that I'm going to like do these things and do it correctly and notch them correctly and then I sew the pockets to the side where they technically should have been the sides and I don't know how I screwed up notching these but I think I'm just going to throw all notches out of the window and just sew from top to bottom because I don't know who I was kidding when I put those in there. Why did these things bother me? I don't know, but they do. All right, some more sewing. So, zipper from a thrift store, and only one pocket, but it'll be fine. Gonna go install it now so the skirt can hang overnight. And now for everyone's super fun game of, hey, how many times can you stab yourself with a straight pen while trying to base a zipper on? No, not everyone's favorite game. Okay, great, just mine. I made it a slight little bit better by watching Captain America and the Winter Soldier on the very small and very old television in my hotel room. And then I left the skirt to hang overnight so that the bias could stretch in ways that I can only fathom, be it my lovely age of 36. 
Three days later. Did I earlier say that I had buttons? Yes, yes I did. Did I actually have buttons that matched? No! No, I sure did not. So I did find two that ended up working and then decided smartly, I guess, at 10.49 at night that it was time to power through the rest of the project. Uh, I would not advise I did not film much of it because, well, it, it only went. I can't really say how. And then, uh, because I also realized at that point that I did not have a zipper foot, I had to hand baste the zipper in. We'll call it couture and go with that, when in actuality it was just practicality and what I had available at that moment. No, it's no, it's no, it's no, it's no. Oops. <laughs> We're just gonna ignore the pile of crap behind me. I did it. I made a thing in a hotel room. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Is it cute? I think so, considering the fact that I self-drafted the daggone thing and made it out of sheets that were more questionable than I thought they were when I first bought them. <laughs> but I think overall, it actually came out quite nice. I'm on the fence. I think if I get home and I can actually fix some of the big things, like the waistband being just sort of <clears throat> like a drunken human made it, I will never be able to fix the fiber content. So that was my own fault and also look for giant stains that are on the back of your skirt. It's cool, it's cool, it's fine. I am also quite proud of myself for actually using someone else's machine on a, I've literally never touched one of those things before and it was a challenge and it almost bested me, but by God, I persevered. Um, <laughs> Overall, I would say this definitely pushed me beyond what I'm used to, uh, not having a pattern, using machine I didn't know, using thread I didn't personally buy, like all of these things. I was stressed, I'm not gonna lie, but I did get it done and I am proud of myself for doing that. I wish I would have found interfacing before I had done these, but oh well, it's fine. So overall, I will say it was a success because, hey, there's a garment, it is on my body, and there are only two safety pins in it because I don't want to put buttonholes on a machine that I don't use. So it's fine. We're, we're good. This garment, I think, will get a little bit of use for me, especially when I go to other contracts where it's actually, you know, vaguely cold outside. Will I wear it in Florida? I don't know. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this adventure today. If you did, make sure you're leaving me a little like before you wander away. If you want to comment and let me know what you think of this, I will absolutely take it. Also, any tips to how to seam rip this waistband so I don't destroy it, which might actually happen if I try and do that. So, I, yeah, tips are welcome. And don't forget that if you do enjoy this type of content, make sure that you're subscribing for more because I am unpredictable when it comes to random ideas of where I'm going to sew and what I'm going to sew. I don't know why, it's just how I am. And until we meet again, I'll see y'all next time. So as much as I really hate, one, it's overhead lighting. Uh, as much as I really hate like my idea to be a, idea to be, what the hell? Cheese and rice, Batman. Shit, let's not destroy the garment you just fucking made. Go in reverse, motherfucker. My God, this thing's like a jackrabbit. That was a thing. <laughs> Boo.
Okay, I can't feel my fingers now. I'm going back inside. <laughs>